Okay, uh, I wanted to make a little video showing off my new favorite module. Uh, this is it. It's the uh, ESP8266 module. This particular one's the ESP12. Uh, what this is, you can see there's Wi-Fi on there. It's a, it's a Wi-Fi module uh, that's used for Arduinos and other little microcontrollers. Um, and this version is the ESP12. It has uh, shielding over it, and so it's FCC uh, compliant, and this particular one's also FCC certified. A lot of things from China just say FCC on them, but this one has actual certification. Uh, most of the other modules don't. There's quite a bit of them. First thing I want to do is give you a little history on the module. It came out a few months ago, and this is the first one that came out. Uh, this is the ESP01, um, and just has a few pins and when this came out it was really surprising to a lot of people because for a Wi-Fi module all the other options available to for Arduinos or any other kind of microcontroller um, was basically thirty dollars or fifty dollars and then when this came out this thing's only five dollars and it's about the same for the twelve so five dollars really changed everything. The problem with this module though is it didn't have a shielding, uh, it wasn't FCC compliant, you couldn't actually use it in commercial products. You're allowed to do five uh, makes of something without it being FCC certified or compliant. And so a lot of makers were using this but there wasn't really any hope for it until they came out with the newer ones. Uh, a little detail about the ESP8266. There's the chip right there. It's basically a 32-bit uh, microprocessor and then you have your uh, SPI flash or just your flash memory. Flash memory is where all your programs are stored on um, and in this case it's their stand standard web stack and how you would use this module on an Arduino is you connect to it through UART like TX and RX and then you can you know send it commands to connect to the internet. And then they've come out with some other ones since this one. Uh, here's another one. I have it broken out already. This is, I think it's the ESP03, uh, maybe the ESP06. It's got an onboard antenna as opposed to these other ones have trace antennas uh, just on the circuit board. Now, I've actually found the trace antenna gives you better reception. So why is this so cool? It's nice. You can hook it up to an Arduino and have Wi-Fi. Well, there's a whole community online right now that's been real active in porting over this chip to Arduino. And what I mean by that is the actual ESP8266, you program Arduino, you program it with the Arduino IDE. So you don't even need you know an AVR chip or anything. This is it. This is your entire Arduino board and it has a Wi-Fi capability and everything and it's five dollars. Uh, that's changing everything, and that's why this is my new favorite chip. You can just get on your standard Arduino ID and program it. And there's been a lot of changes in that. Uh, it used to be you had to put it in firmware update mode and do all these things. It was real buggy. Um, I started using it you know, a few months back when they first started porting it over. But now they've gotten a lot of the bugs worked out. They ported over a lot of the libraries. A lot of stuff works with it. So... What I wanted to show you now is just a little demo of what it can do. Um, currently I have the module here. All I've done to it is here's an example. So the pen spacing uh, is not very friendly for makers. It's great for if you're building an end product, but the pen spacing on it is actually uh, two millimeter pen spacing. Well. Most breadboards and what most hobbyists use is uh, 2.54 millimeter spacing or 0.1 inch. So what I've done is taken some L headers and I've bent them in so that I can basically make a little breakout board for it. It works pretty good. I've done it on the uh, other module as well. So what this is is a USB serial converter. That's what you use to program it through your TX and RX lines. Uh, they've made it where it does auto reset. It automatically put it in the programming mode. It fires the uh, DTR pin, sets that low. That'll hold down the program or set the program pin to low, and then it fires the RTS pin 
which resets it. And since the program pin's low, it'll go into um, reset mode, or go into program mode. And then the Arduino IDE will program it up. Now, one of the great things about it is that since it uses the uh, external flash, as opposed to having the flash memory built onto the chip itself, uh, you can kind of expand it to whatever you want. Uh, I think the original ESP01 had uh, 512 kilobytes of flash, um, but the, uh, the ESP12, which is my new favorite one, actually has four megabytes of flash. And you can compare that to the Arduino Uno that has 32 kilobytes of flash. And some of that's used by the bootloader on the Arduino Uno. Uh, in fact, the Arduino IDE can't even handle more than 512 uh, kilobytes. So four megabytes of flash is just, I mean, it's more powerful than the IDE can even handle. It's great. Um, and it's also 32-bit and it's fast. Uh, I think it runs at um, 80 megahertz, and some of them I think run at 160. So compare that to 16 megahertz on the Arduino ID. It's all 3.3 volt for all the GPIOs. Now, the only thing I don't like about this module is something that caused me a lot of headache, and that is that the GPIO uh, 4 and 5 are mislabeled. Uh, Four is actually where five is, and five is where four is. Um, in fact, when I was setting up this project, I was using uh, what's labeled as GPIO four as my uh, DC, but it wasn't working properly. It was glitching, and I could tell stuff was going. I just didn't know exactly what was going on. Finally, I found on a forum that's what's going on. Uh, the module has quite a few GPIOs. Um, they can be used for I mean, pretty much anything. Uh, it's got SPI flash, uh, I squared C, uh, serial. Um, it has one ADC pin. Now this isn't on all modules. Uh, in fact, on this one, it's got a lot of uh, pins on it as well, but it does not have the ADC pin. What that is is a little analog to digital converter so you can read voltage. Uh, I don't think it actually reads from zero to 3.3 volts. I think it actually reads from 1 to 3.3, but you can at least, uh, you know, at least you have some kind of input there for analog, uh, which is important. That's one thing that the other modules were missing. So, since it's been ported over, what I have here is this is running the uh, Adafruit GFX library, and right now it just says off. I'll show you more about that later. Um, that's all connected through SPI serial. And other than that, there's not really any components needed. Uh, I have a few capacitors. I was having some weird power issues early on. I think when the module's in Wi-Fi, apparently it can pull up to 250 milliamps. And I think that's, it pulls it real quickly. It draws down the voltage and you get I, I just all kinds of weird voltage issues and you get a lot of ghost problems you don't really know how to diagnose. I had a lot of issues with it working on it at first. So I had some big capacitors. I don't know if they're actually doing anything, but I don't seem to be having too many problems. Um, other than that, there's a few pass components. There's a, two buttons. There's a reset button, and then I have the program button. Uh, early on in the IDE, they didn't have it where it could auto-fire the reset and program pins. Now that's all ported over to the Arduino IDE. So. Um, those buttons aren't really useful. I, I mean, the reset button I still use, but mostly I don't use any of them. Let's see. Um, I have this. This is a little 2.4 inch TFT screen. I got this for $6 on buydisplay.com. And then a little breakout board I made uh, with Osh Park. It's a custom PCB just to break out all the pins I need for SPI. And I have this all hooked up to a power supply. Right now, it's transmitting on Wi-Fi. I'll get into more on the program that I'm running. Uh, it's I'm running at 3.4 volts. I stepped it up just a tiny bit just to prevent some of the voltage issues I was having, uh, the voltage drop issues. It's running about uh, 100 milliamps right now, transmitting. And that goes down quite a bit when you're not actually using Wi-Fi. I've never seen it go up to 250 milliamps but um, apparently it can so you need you know a, a sufficient 3.3 power supply or an LDO that can handle that from USB 
Uh, and I didn't find that this uh, USB to serial adapter, the traces weren't big enough to actually handle it on the 5 volt to step it down. And the 3.3 volt on this is just, I think it's 20 milliamps is all it can output because it's a FTDI chip. So anyway, let's get into the program. Uh, what I'm running on my phone is a program, it's called Solis app, or Solis. Uh, it's an open source program for uh, basically Internet of Things home automation. I have this node synced up to it, so um, basically this is connected through a web gateway. Uh, the modules, you know, on the network, uh, my local home network through Wi-Fi. My phone's on the same network through Wi-Fi. So what this program can do is, real quickly, I can turn this on and off. Now I could have just done this with an LED, um, but I wanted to show the capabilities of this little module. The fact that right now it's powering that TFT display and it's rewriting the entire screen with all new pixels every time I'm firing this. And it works pretty quickly. So all this is happening through basically a web socket. And the great thing about this program is it's a home automation program. So I can have it that if one of these pins goes high, you can you know, open your garage door or whatever. You can open your garage door from your phone. You can set timers. You can do all kinds of stuff. And you've been able to do this kind of stuff with Arduino if you bought a $30 um, Wi-Fi module plus your twenty dollar Arduino and then you have to get a power supply and all that but this I mean this is your entire this is everything I mean, it's a little five dollar chip and it gives you GPIOs and everything Now you don't have as many as the Arduino but um, since it has I squared C you can use a little uh, you can use a little port expander if you needed to uh, but yeah, this is the ESP8266 and the ESP12 module. It is amazing. And they did just come out with a new one. It's called the ESP12E. What they've done is they have a couple more pins out here on the back. I think it gives you two additional GPIOs, and then it breaks out the... Uh, I believe they're the pins that actually it uses for the flash memory. Uh, so I don't know if you can actually even use those for much. Although I don't have one, so I haven't got to play with it. I'm just speculating. But these are amazing. Look into it. Uh, you can Google search ESP8266 Arduino, and they have a GitHub project. Um, all of this can be loaded into the standard Arduino IDE using the boards manager, uh, the boards package manager. Um, they have information on how to do it on GitHub. Uh, this thing is amazing. You can also check out the uh, Solus. Um, on their GitHub page, just search GitHub for S O U L I S S. Uh, and yeah, this is uh, it's exciting times to be a maker.